Yeah, I'm good, thank you. you to have a packet of cigarettes behind you, eh? <laughs> I know. It's quite bad. Well, it's actually, I did it for A-level art. Oh, is it? Beautiful. Um, you painted that yourself? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, That's it. Yeah, wow. it's basically, it looks quite dodgy having a pack of cigarettes on my yeah. wall, but... <laughs> no, it's rock and roll, but nowadays everyone's so anti-cigarettes and anti-everything. You know, the world's gone mad. So I know. I said, I it, know. I said it in a you know in, in a nice way. The world's gone mad, you know, but you know, mad's not always a bad thing. You know. No, it's got. There's good things about it and bad things about it, to be honest. Mm. But but it's stuff like I have this neon sign down here as well. And I wanted to put it in the oh. back of like TikToks, but I feel like this is a bit too aggressive as well. What <laughs> is that? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I got you, given you, it as a gift you know though. So. Jasmine, you're definitely making a statement, and I think it's the generation. You're the gen. Well, the gen when you're in your twenties or whatever, you're young, whatever else. It's one of those times where you are making statements. So it's one of yeah. those. But look, can I ask you? But obviously, you're a singer, songwriter. I can see the keyboard behind, which looks fantastic. But can I ask you? So, are you a student as well? Did you go to university? You were like a student. Yeah, well, I actually just graduated, so okay. I just finished uni. But I did go to university, so I was at university last year and stuff. So. But I did music, thankfully. Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> Which was fun. So what kind of stuff, in terms of music, what was it? Because I don't know much about what a music degree even sounds like, because I didn't get any uh, yeah. training at all in music. So so and I, and I, 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 love, I love music, I adore music, but I never got to, I never, no one taught me anything. So I was kind of taught myself and stuff. So what is a music yeah. degree like? What's, what's, what, what kind of things you do? Um. Well, for me, so I chose to go down the songwriting route because mm. I, you know, I just thought it'd be, well, like you don't really get that at school or anything. So I thought it'd be interesting to like do more because I could have gone down a performance route, but I thought songwriting might be better. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So it kind of consisted of like you learn how to write with other people, like you learn, sorry, different like techniques of writing yourself. Um, they do teach you other stuff as well. So we had a bit of like production. Um, we had like learning about music culture and stuff like that. They did. So with all the courses, you had what you specialised in, but then you also had a bit of everything else. Mm. So, that yeah, that was good. Um, but yeah, I found it really good to like find other people who also like songwriting because also, well, at my sixth form, I was one of four people who did A-level music. So mm. there wasn't a lot of people doing it. So when I went to this uni, it was great because you were just surrounded by like minded people. And I actually found it quite fun kind of writing with people because I hadn't done that before and also I found it quite fun because they give you little like um so like when I write myself I just you know write songs that I want to write kind of thing mm. but um they had like briefs and stuff with some things so it's quite good to be able to write for something mm. like different so I don't know if that makes sense but they'll tell you there's something to think about and you've got to then write a song about a specific thing yeah yeah that and also stuff like um writing for an advert or writing okay, for yeah, yeah. oh yeah so and film. it goes i never had any of that i never for a second in my mind thought and i should i should have thought because i think some of the great i mean beatles i'm sure the beatles did a lot of that do you know what I mean some of the yeah. great artists do they like they're very commercial thinking when it comes to their writing their songs and i never thought i just thought well i want to write about what's going on in my head you know kind of thing yeah exactly but you, yeah you, you play an instrument yeah i play piano Okay. But I, I have to say, I wasn't the best student in a sense that I never mm. read the music. I always kind of did everything by ear. But it's mm. quite funny looking back because I was just sitting there, like, playing the piano. And then, like, I'd forget to turn the page. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. When really, yeah. I was just not focusing on that. <laughs> yeah, because, but, you know, I don't know, the greatest, I think the greatest creatives, you know, it's a lot of that's in their head. And it's like, you just don't want to listen to or You just want to create, you just want to get out and do your own thing, isn't it? That's what being in a band's all about and do music kind of thing. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly that. And I'm very kind of like, well, in the end, my piano teacher was like, look, I'm going to stop teaching you this classical stuff and I'm going to start teaching you because I know you like writing and mm. creating. So she started teaching me different techniques in that sense. And I actually love that because mm. it really helped and it really helped with my songwriting and stuff like that. So that was good of her as well. She's a bit of a legend, to be fair. Yeah. 
I've got to say, talk, we've got to talk about your music now, because obviously I've seen you perform. I watched you at the in, in Guildford. I can't remember the name of the venue. Yeah. Like you were supporting Sabrina. Yeah. Oh, that was a really fun gig, actually. Yeah. And I was quite impressed. I was like, you know, what? I love the energy. I love the, the energy. The band musicians, your musicians were doing a lot of great things. But you were very chilled. You had a very kind of chilled vibe about you. And I kind of, it seems very modern, but it's a very chilled vibe on the stage. And I just thought about your voice. And I think you've got this lovely, soothing, chilled voice. Oh, is thank that because, you. Is that because of the kind of um, kind of life you live? Or is that, you know, what's what why what's created that kind of voice? Or why have you decided on that voice or that style? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I mean... Well, my life's always been a bit chaotic in a sense of like, mm. well, I don't know, just like what well, everyone's life is, but that's what I write my music about. So I'm glad about that in a way. Mm. But so, yeah, I, I'm not sure how I got my voice because people have kind of asked that before in a sense, like what got you to sing that way? Because mm. I don't necessarily sing how I like speak. And also mm. I, I always try to figure out, I have this accent when I sing and I'm always like, where's that come from <laughs> as mm. well? But yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but I've always loved like artists with like really soft and airy vocals. Mm. So when I was younger, I really loved, um, a, well, I loved Birdie. She was one of my favourites when I was in secondary school. And right now as well, obviously Billie Eilish, she's got those kind of vocals. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly, but I do remember kind of when I was younger, I also listened to a lot of Adele when I was in like primary school and mm. I loved singing. But her like voice is like really like strong, powerful, almost the same as if you were singing like a musical theatre. It's like, like yeah, really strong vocals. And um, I always found that when I sang higher and stuff, I couldn't really get that belty, mm -hmm. strong kind of thing. And maybe it comes from me kind of like almost replacing that with singing it in an airy way. And then I've just developed from then, if that makes sense. Mm, great. Uh, you know, we're going to play. Hopefully, if you you consent, we'll put some of your music in the video yeah. as well. So that'd be nice. So oh, yeah. you know, a lot of artists talk about their truth, and I speak to when I say speak, to, I speak to all sorts of artists. But a lot of the young artists that I speak to are me. They talk about their truth. It's very important, like especially in hip hop and rap music. What? Yeah. Is, what is your truth? I think, well, with me as a person and with music and everything, like my truth is to just be like the most authentic me that I can, if that makes sense. Because mm. um, with music, with me, it's like quite therapeutic and I kind of see it as a like, almost like a little superpower, actually. I say this quite a lot, but one thing I love about me, like writing songs and stuff and being able to like create music is like, mm. say I've had a really bad day or something's gone wrong, or I don't know, something's upset me. like if I wasn't writing music I'd probably come home and be all you know annoyed about it and it'd ruin the rest of my day but I find like it actually makes me want to write a song and then I start writing a song and then I make this thing that I end up loving I mean not all songs you love in the end but most yeah. of the time there's like this song that I feel really passionate about and it's kind of almost taken away like the negativity of the situation it came from mm. so yeah I just yeah, I don't know. It's just like being authentically me, being true to myself. And another thing as well is like, I know a lot of musicians who were really passionate about music, but they didn't think that it's kind of a real route they could go down. And they've kind of forced themselves down this path of, you know, doing like a history degree or something because it seems like real. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my main thing, yeah, through my music and my life is just, I just want to do what I enjoy and what I'm passionate about. And that's mainly like, yeah, the most important thing to me because... I mean, if you can have a job where it's something that you love, like it's not really a job at all. Mm, of course, um, definitely, definitely. So you, but you, are you an inner city kid or are you like a suburban kid? Um. So yeah, I live. I've lived in a village my whole life. Oh wow! Because um, you know, do you know why I'm saying this? Because when I went to Guildford, yeah, I just remember thinking one of the things I found about Guildford, it was absolutely beautiful. Obviously, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, but it's like. It's like you can't park anywhere. They don't want you to oh, park. They don't want you staying around. It's like literally yeah. they, don't want you, they want you to come and see it and drive off. It's like they want it to keep it as beautiful, you know what I mean, and picturesque as possible. And every anyone else, I, I, just, I just kind of thought, well, I can't find anywhere to park. So yeah. everyone was something <laughs> chilled out. And everyone was like, yeah, in a nice, happy world. But there was no one invading their lovely, happy world. Whereas in, in the city, 
there's you know you always there's no space here you know everyone feels on top of each other in, in the inner city yeah yeah, no, that's so true about Guildford. I haven't really thought about it in that way before. Mm. But yeah, it's terrible for parking. If anyone was coming to visit me, like friends or family, we'd have to like drive them somewhere, mm. park like quite far out, and then have to like drive them back and then we it's park. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? They love giving everyone tickets. Yeah, like even if, so for mm. our uni house, even to park on the road that mm. we lived on, you had to pay a permit, which mm. is so annoying. Um. Yeah, I don't know why it is, but it's quite strange. Do but yeah, Guildford is... So do you feel that people are just... I don't know I don't know if you know the difference, but do you think people are nicer mm. where you live than, than they um, are where I you know where I grew up in the inner city? Do you think people are nicer or do you think it's just because people just don't have the same kind of cares or whatever? Well, that's quite interesting, actually, because... So I don't come from Guildford originally. I come from Kent. So I've just, moved back home nice. now. Which is just as nice, Kent, come on. <laughs> yeah, it is It is really nice down here. I feel quite lucky, because hmm. actually, funny story, when I was in Guildford in the summer, um, hmm. and it was really hot, I said to my friends, oh, let's go to a beach. And they were like, um, Jasmine, there's no beaches around here. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> where I live, there's like, I don't know, a beach is <laughs> like maximum 40 minutes away. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I found it strange because, yeah, I've actually noticed how people are different depending on where they live. I didn't really realise that. And um, my boyfriend, he also lives in Oxfordshire. And when I went even further up that way, mm. people seem to be even nicer up there. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, long, long may it continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but, um, but to be fair, I do, like, I do love London and big cities as mm. well. Because for me, I mean, some people hate that, like, busy stuff. But for me, I like that there's so much life mm. and there's so much going on. Oh, yeah. So I feel... Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like I can, I can appreciate both. Like, obviously, when it's countryside and it's, it's quite peaceful and relaxing, but then also I do like there being, like, life and always something to do and, like, new people to meet. So, I, yeah, I like both, really. But Brilliant. I have always lived in, like, a village, and then I went to Guildford, so... Brilliant. Yeah. So, so basically, tell me a little bit about your style of music.
that surprised what music has? I mean, with this question, I always like it's, I always find it hard to say when it's your music because. Yeah, when I started uni as well, I started to dabble in other genres. Mm. Um, so more like kind of soft indie rock and then more kind of like electronic or like dark pop, kind of like Billy Eilish. Yeah, mm. yeah, but overall, I feel like mm. I just keep coming back to just, I know pop's a big genre. So mm. like I would say it's pop, but I'm not sure what subgenre it would be exactly. But yeah, I... I do have a tendency to keep writing songs that are like completely different to the other one, <laughs> but they all have the same sort of, luckily they all kind of have something that ties it together with the rest. Cause that's what I was always worried about. Like, cause mm. I like, I have a massive, like, I like love loads of different genres. There's not like one specific thing that I like. So obviously that influences my music and ways. So I can do, I don't know. I've written a lot of different kind of things, but luckily they're all kind of pulled together. But I'd say pop overall and, at the moment, I've got a song that will be coming out soon, and that is very, it's a, a lot more commercial pop than I normally write, oh, but yeah. I actually really like it. And I think another thing being at a music uni, everyone's trying to be like, I, well, everyone's great, but also everyone's trying to be like cool at the same time. Mm -hmm. So people are very like judgy of like music genres and stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I found like, I did find I was trying to like do all these different things, but mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'll just say it's pop, but I, I don't care anymore. I'm like, I'm just going to write what I write. Yeah, it's not, who cares? If, it's, if, pop, if pop is popular, it's not. It's a good thing, isn't it? It's great. Exactly, exactly. You exactly. don't want to be serious. It's great to be a cult artist as well, but ultimately you want to sell records. We I mean, know long gone are the days yeah. where people were like, you know what, I just want to be cool. It's like you've got to make money for music. You can't make money for music in that anymore now anyway, other than streams. Exactly. So it's crazy, actually. You've, but, got be, you've got to be popular. Yeah, and that's the thing. Music's actually crazy at the moment because it seems like after lockdown and COVID, there's just been this massive influx of artists. And mm. it's kind of weird because mm. Spotify is so easy to release on there now. I feel like it's almost turned into like um, SoundCloud a little bit because mm. instead of just releasing and it being easy to find, now you have these other kind of like obstacles to jump over. And you have to try like get on playlists and um, and also TikTok as well. Mm. That's a that's a new thing as like someone yeah, who writes so much, music. It's a lot of work, isn't it? As an artist now, mm. it's so much. It's like there's no more the days when you can literally just go, I've written a song, I've got, and there's an A&R guy will take it and he will just yeah carry you along the way. And you'll be like, yeah, you could be a bit of an idiot with him and he'll be like, yeah, keeping you happy. You can't yeah. do it work. Yeah, it's literally, mm. it's actually crazy. I found it, well, I'm trying to get into um, posting more TikToks and more consistently and stuff like that because it is so important. But, it's funny because it's like I'm having to like acquire this new kind mm. of skill and almost like, well, I can't really do things that I'm not You've passionate seen about. Sorry, I've seen your stuff. You've got some great stuff. You've got some oh, great thank you. stuff, especially on Instagram. You've done some great, lots of great effects. It's very oh, popular. thank you. I'm like, wow, these kids know what they're doing. <laughs> so you're doing well, a great job. Definitely doing a good oh, job. No, I'm, so, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm going to say as well. Um, because I'm talking about you, but also I'm sure your music, you you do you write with a team, do you write with your band, or you just are you just a solo artist? So, well, originally I just did everything on my own, and mm. it was just me and my piano, and that was it. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, like going to uni was great because I got to meet all these other musicians. So mm. um when I sing, like I obviously sing as a solo artist, okay. but I'm really lucky because I do have like mm my band that do play with me though so mm. they're kind of more like a artist band mm. but um but when we've been doing stuff live because mm. a lot of the songs I haven't actually recorded yet um mm. each person's kind of like come up with their own little spin to it and I actually love that and some of like my favorite things in songs mm. that I've written recently have actually come from like the members of the band just doing their own thing and I'm like oh I need to actually keep that in the actual thing but um me and my boyfriend met at uni and he mm. does production. So since we met, we've actually been writing a lot of songs together. That's, um, that's a good match. Sing yeah, I know. Producer. <laughs> You're not missing I know. That's it's like, I feel mm. quite lucky because, um, mm. so I play piano, write and sing. Mm. He plays guitar, bass mm. and does production. Wow. So together, all mm. we need is drums. <laughs> but yeah, I feel quite lucky in that sense. And it's actually really fun to be able to like, I don't know, like before, if 
I was dating somebody who doesn't like music or whatever. I'll do it in my spare time. But now we can do it like together. And it's actually quite fun. And my favorite thing as well is like when I'm on stage, if I'm feeling a bit nervous, I have, well, I have my boyfriend. Then I have my friends from uni just all surrounding me. So that's one of my favorite things about playing live. It's It's, like playing with your friends. Yeah, definitely. It's like a family too. But I, yeah. I, saw, I saw online that you went to do a TV show. How did that come about? Something, you know, oh, yeah. Um, so what was that, what was was that actually, like and how did that come about? Um, yeah, so it's actually my mum sent me this kind of like ad that mm. the TV channel posted saying they need music. Like they've got like three slots or something and they need musicians to come on and be interviewed and sing um, acoustically on the show. And I was just like... Oh, I'll apply for it. I didn't know what to expect because I didn't know how many people were going to apply or whatever. But yeah, I just got, wow. like, luckily I got selected. Wow. Um, mm. Yeah. And it was like quite afterwards, I was like really excited. But then it dawned on me. I was like, oh no, mm. I haven't been on TV before. Hang on a minute. What do you do? Um, but it was actually a really great experience. I mean, considering it's the first time I've like been interviewed properly. So this is actually my second interview. Mm. So. Um, well, you're gonna get used to it. Don't worry, you're gonna get used to it. Don't be nervous. You've got to basically with the whole thing. Just going when you as you get more into your music and understand your music and you become part of the whole thing, it just becomes so easy. And half the time, you probably yeah. want to say less because you don't, you know, you want to give too much away because you know you're wet. You got an album or an EP to put out. And you want to keep as much of it to your chest and surprise everyone. But what's happened now? I would say interviews are so important because of mm. Instagram and and because of the, of social media, you kind of got to be out there yeah definitely and I don't know I thought it was I really enjoyed it Mm. and also the fact like singing um I mean it's like singing live but there was no audience which was quite Mm. interesting because sometimes you can feed up like you know feed off the audience Mm. or but Mm. it was actually quite weird to sing live knowing that it can't be re-recorded because I mean if I'm recording like that's like singing live but you can just Mm. redo it but yeah it can be it was quite an interesting experience and with um I remember the thing I struggled the most with was the uh, she did a quick fire round of questions mm. and um I was really bad about <laughs> I kept talking it like I'd answer and then I was like wait <laughs> it's meant to be quick fire and I'm just going into loads of detail um <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. you'll learn you'll learn the skill don't worry you learn the skill yeah. let me ask oh. a few questions because obviously these are I'm so kind of similar to quick fire but not exactly who do you prefer Madonna or Kate Bush um, I'd definitely go with Kate Bush. I think Kate she's Bush. great. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, Kate Bush is fantastic. 100%. Oh, Madonna, I... though. Madonna, Madonna's amazing. See, oh my God, she did what she did. I mean, a lot of people are kind of, you know, like kind of slagging Madonna off now. She's getting a bit old, yeah, that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, Madonna, she did so much of her music, and yeah, no, definitely. The whole generation. So, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a hard question, but you got but you chose a fantastic singer, Ed Sheeran or Jamie T. Hmm. I do I do really like Jamie T but mm. one thing about Ed Sheeran is that I just feel like he's like some songwriting machine he can just like churn out all these yeah. songs yeah. that are literally hits mm. and mm. I tend to when he's done a lot of collabs as well mm. and I've always been able to like notice that he had written on it without mm. knowing but mm. just from the way it sounds and I think that's yeah, really yeah. cool wow. so, yeah. and he went to Guildford ACM Uni as well. So. Did he? Wow. Yeah. But he, mm. I think he failed everything and dropped out, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he did well, all right. Yeah, so. Exactly. If you've got his talent, it's easy peasy. You know, that's one of the things. Yeah. He's a very special individual. And the thing is, I love about Eddie Sheeran is the confidence he has to go out there yeah. and perform on his own. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody with a guitar, kicking his that drum the synthesizer thing he does, you know what I mean? It repeats itself. Oh my God, he's doing so many things. He's like, whatever. It's like, yeah, no worries. I'll just do this. And I'm going to, how many people? 50,000 people, no biggie. So, you know, he's an incredible, incredible guy. And, you know, a great export for England. So, okay, Hendrix or Bob Marley? Do you know Hendrix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must know Uh, Bob Marley. No, of course, of course. Mm. I mean, um, hmm. I feel like, I feel like I would go for Bob Marley. Because, mm. I mean, my parents actually just went to see the uh, live musical in London. And they've been telling me a lot about, like, Bob Marley and his life and stuff from that. So mm. recently, I've actually been quite interested in 
like mm-hmm. Bob Marley himself too. I would say that, especially at the moment. But okay. what would you, what would you say? There you go. I'm turning the question on you. I absolutely. <laughs> you know what? That's the hardest. This seriously, like, it's such a hard one because I absolutely adore Hendrix. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Hendrix is such a special guy. Um, Bob Marley, because I'd say Bob Marley's songwriting is phenomenal. Yeah. You know, he was a. Like he said he was a bit of a songwriting machine as well. But what yeah. was, did you find out from from that um, the show that you went to in London? Not you, but your mum, your parents went to the show. Did they tell you that uh, about Bob Marley being mixed race? No. Yeah. Did you, did you know that Bob Marley was mixed race? No, I don't think I did actually. No. Yeah, man, he's mixed race. You know, do your research, find out. Bob Marley's mixed race. He's quite <laughs> an interesting character in that regard. Do you know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know. A lot of things, a lot of his story, all these things add to the person's character. I believe what's going on in your life is going on in your mind, and it just brings this kind of magic because you're going through so many things. And I think that little that was probably part of the spice that made Bob Marley so special. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So and also, yeah, I don't know. And also, his whole like persona as well. It's like he just didn't really seem to like give a shit. Really, he yeah, just kind well, of. Was, <laughs> you know how I said I, I want to be like. Probably, what, it was probably a bit about what he was smoking that helped a bit as well. <laughs> yeah, that that <laughs> might have helped as well. Okay, so ma- madness or the specials? Um, right. Hmm. Okay, I, I would say madness because I've seen them, mm. and I actually. So I used to go to a performing arts school, mm. and um, we did like a show based for their songs, and they're just they're so catchy. Mm. But I do, I do like the specials as well. Like my boyfriend's family, they're very, very into their scar. So yeah, yeah. I wonder what they'll think of my answer for this. But yeah. um but yeah, my uncle was as well. But mm. yeah, I'd say madness, but that's probably because I've seen them. I have a bit of like a <laughs> Yeah, they're both just as great. They're both just incredible at the time. They I mean, but I, I love the specials because of a lot. I mean, they're both similar in that way. They're both integrated, integrated bands. Yeah. And I think it'd be just so ahead of the time. That to me. I'm so, I'm so grateful that, that ba- those bands happened, put it that way. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I love them. And, and there's another band that I should have mentioned, The Beat. Have you heard the, was it the English Beat or The Beat? Check them out. They're fantastic as I well. I will. I'm actually yeah. going to write it down just so I don't forget. Yeah, The Beat or The English Beat, whatever they're called now. Uh, one more thing as well. The October Drift or The Velvet Starlings? Um, have you heard I, don't it, th- guys? I don't think I have. Well, you know what? I've mentioned it for a reason because you've got to check them out. Check out okay. October Drift and check right, out nothing. The Starlings. The Velvet okay. Starlings is on Cost of Use. You can find out about the Velvet Starlings. They're a fantastic American band, garage band, yeah. everything else. They're like a way, they're like a modern day Beatles and everything else rolled into one. They're fantastic. The, the guitarist is insane. He's a young kid who completely, I don't know, he plays guitar and plays the piano at the bloody same time, literally. He's just insane. That is insane. So we talk about Ed Sheeran, hard. you're going to be like, what the hell <laughs> is this kid on? <laughs> Oh, no, that sounds awesome. And he, yeah, and he, loves, the doors. he, loves, he loves the doors. Jim, do you know Jim Morrison? Oh, yeah, my yeah. mum hmm. ad- adores the doors. There we go. She's really? always, but, yeah, she always plays the doors. I've actually I've actually stolen some of her vinyls that I've been playing in my room Well, you should play it all day long. It's the most beautiful stuff. Uh, you know, you've got, right, you've got to be right uh, a wavelength as well when you, when you uh, listen to that music. Yeah, what, definitely. <laughs> what, oh, yeah, I want to say, oh, God, I want to say something to you. That's it. What's your um? So basically, we talked about music, loads of different artists and stuff like that, and great, big, well-known acts. But what was your influence? What influenced you? Um, musical influences. What created you? I'm not sure. I'm not very good at these answers in a sense of that. But hmm. I mean, I don't. I can't pinpoint one thing that has influenced me. In a sense that, like, there's one artist, there's one because, like, my music, my love for music, like, I literally love all genres. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I always say, like, if it's a good song, mm-hmm. it's like it's a good song. I don't mm-hmm. care what genre mm-hmm. it's under or who it's <laughs> by. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that I did really love and most recently is mm-hmm. Billie Eilish because I feel like she completely changed. Mm. Like in the, like in my like generation anyway, she completely changed what it is to be a female mm. pop like pop star. If that makes sense. So, I remember when I was younger because I have always wanted to do music and I've always like loved singing and everything. But 
I remember seeing like people like Little Mix or mm. well, people yeah, like that, yeah. and they're always wearing yeah, like they were very commercial that that band, weren't they? Very, little Mix were very commercial, yeah. Yeah, very. But that, that's just an example I could think of in a sense that they're or I don't know. Or yeah, they're always wearing like these half like swimming costume looking things on the stage, and everyone's like hardly wearing any clothes, and mm. it was all quite almost like quite sexualized in a yeah, way. Yeah, of course, of course. And like I always thought, like if I was ever singing, I was like. I'll just wear jeans and a t-shirt or something, or something. But the thing with Billie Eilish is like, she kind of like, I don't know. She she just went on without care and wearing like her like baggy shorts, baggy t-shirt. She came out with like all you know everything she believed. She was like very open mm. about being her as well. Mm. Mm. Um, and I just thought I think it made a big shift because then you had like people like Lizzo, for example coming in also like owning being herself and stuff. I feel like it's created this new really good like mm. thing where everyone's just being them yeah. more and not trying to be like a commercial pop artist and doing everything that they think they have to. They're just being more authentic. So basically. what do you think about Amy Winehouse? Because do you think Amy Winehouse was trying to be like a pop artist or she was just being herself? What do you think about that? I think I think she was being herself, but because of the time I feel like I imagine she probably got a lot of pressure to mm. be kind of like yeah to not be as much herself to be um more of a product like a caricature a like a bit of a caricature kind of thing yeah. yeah um but this is a bit of a side note but mm. I had one of my well my second gig ever was at the Camden Assembly and I thought it was so cool because I know Amy Winehouse played there a lot mm. but yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic mm. but yeah I yeah, I would say that, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I think she was being, like, authentically herself, but there's more people in the background that we obviously don't know about. Mm. I mean, I don't know about anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I met Amy Winehouse, and but the, prior to her, she went for, to me, she went for this phase, because when I met her, it was the, her first album. She's done her first album. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she just became this, she was covered in tattoos, and it was just... yeah. She's hair bits of white bits there. So she she definitely took on a different style. But that might just be just, she just that was the style she wanted to do. She just thought, you know what, yeah. I really want to be the pop star. And that would still be that could you could say that was still herself, you know? Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, that's actually really interesting and really cool that you met Amy Winehouse, by the way. <laughs> but um I think as well, one thing is like people are themselves, but mm. because it is an industry. And like you have to almost see yourself as a brand in a way, mm. you almost have to like exaggerate yourself because mm. it is like a when you're performing, I guess it is like a show. So I guess like it could be, I guess it could be someone's style. But for example, like, yeah, it might just be like a bit more exaggerated because I know for me with my Instagram, mm. I mean, I kind of treat my Instagram well, like it's my art, like mm. the same way I do with art, but I, but. I don't ever try like copy anyone or anything, but mm. I just kind of do things that I like. I like like it is a piece of art, but mm. I do sometimes have to like almost exaggerate it in a way just to make it stand out. Mm. Do you know? I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, but, but it sounds to me honestly. I'm so glad to hear. It's refreshing to to hear that artists are trying to be themselves rather than trying to be these, I say, caricatures of themselves. Yeah, you can get lost along the way. And I think you've got to stay true to yourself, otherwise you will get lost. 100%. You will get lost. And the industry will suck you up, and you get and you, when you come out at the end of it, because not everyone's going to make it. You know, when you come mm -hmm. out at the end of it, you don't know who you are. You're trying to play that character, and you see a lot of artists today. A lot of these big artists, the big famous artists, they're still playing them. They're still living those characters. You know, it's yeah. like, but you've got to grow up. You all grow up. There's a time where you can actually just stop being the character. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I think, I think and you've got to trap yourself in a in a character. And you get stuck in that character forever. And it, it, it makes you kind of a bit of a slave, you know, to the public. Yeah. You to be true to who you are, you know? It must be painful. But that's another yeah, exactly. question. Exactly, I'll take that. I've got to change in there. I've got to take something else. Um, if you could take, if you could change two things about the world right now, what would they be? Oh, wow. That's a big question. <laughs> um, two it's things an easy about... question, man. It's an easy question. Come on, there's two things that need to be changed. <laughs> Well, I mean, I feel like at the moment there's quite a lot of things that need to be changed. Mm. But one thing, I mean, one thing I would change is like a sense that like I feel like a lot of people 
are mm. like wasting their lives not doing something they love mm. and like I find like getting a, your first paycheck is almost like a it's like a drug in a way because once you start getting it mm. why would you want to stop and a lot of people like get a job when they leave uni or whatever and then they just they're like oh well it's easy now I guess I'll just keep doing this keep doing this and I just think everyone's kind of forgets the things that they're passionate about and like that's one thing I'll change like, I just want it to be more like encouraged to like and there'll be more I don't know to, to be doing something that you enjoy because in at school and stuff I got a lot of like oh you're doing music a level oh, that's not a real subject that sort of thing and like but there's so many people that love it but don't do it because of that so I mean I don't know how you could change that but that's one thing I think would be better and I think a lot of people would be happier because yeah everyone's kind of just I mean if you enjoy your job amazing but I think there's just so many people who are kind of spending their life like doing something because they feel like they have to do it and not because they want to do it okay that's one what's two come on that's one <laughs> two oh gosh um okay the world I mean there's like the classics like <laughs> end world hunger no wars obviously them there you go that's good enough I'll go with but, that I'll go with that no wars is a, I'll go with the no wars stuff straight off yeah the bat. you know what I, I don't get why they don't just if they want to have a war What's wrong with laser tag? <laughs> just do a look. Just work. end it in laser tag. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Give them, yeah, <laughs> good one. Well, it's kind of get Putin in the room with uh, Zelensky. Do you know what I mean laser tag? That'll work out. Yeah, exactly. And then no one gets yeah, hurt. But one will get upset though. It'll be their egos will be bruised, and they'll just find another way to fight. But anyway, I want to go there. True. All right. So multiple choice questions. Very quickly, we're going to finish soon. Uh, okay. you, you can you can you can be one or the other. Rebel without a cause, or vegan or vegan warrior. Vegan, vegan warrior. Um, Maybe one or the other. I don't know. I guess I'd be a vegan warrior. Cause... Okay, all right. I'm not, <laughs> okay, rich or poor. Um. Well, I don't know. It depends. Oh, sorry. I'm really bad at quick questions. One or the other. I'm one or the other. Rich, rich, or rich or poor. I mean. I would only say rich in a sense that you have the freedom to do more. So no, don't worry about it. It's fine. That's why just rich or poor is easy. Don't worry. No one's gonna uh, uh, quiz you for it or judge yeah. you for anything. Comedian or comedian or mathematician. You can be one or the other. Comedian, one hundred percent. Okay. You All can right. make people smile. There you go. Okay. Nice one. So. Prime minister or England football manager. Ooh, I think a football manager is funner. Yeah, exactly. In a way, oh, let's see. brilliant. Okay, Blondie, you can be Blondie, Adele, or Amy Winehouse. Who are you going to be? Ooh, I don't know. I feel like it's hmm. I would say, I mean, oh, sorry, I don't know. I'm going to go with Adele because okay. I think it's really good that she she writes all these ballads, but mm -hmm. um sometimes if you write i used to get scared if i wrote two slow songs that they would like get boring but with her it's like they don't so there mm. you go no she's fantastic she's a fantastic writer. i'm glad you mentioned that all right so what's your favorite song and why um so i'm gonna go i i have a few but i'll say two of them i'll say three really quickly though so across the universe by the beatles i think it's like really underrated. Not a lot of people that I know know it, but I just think it's a really beautiful song. And it's with, um, it's got, I think it's got a sitar playing it in it as well, which I think is really nice. And then um, there's a song called I'm Just Afraid, I'm So Afraid by this artist called, I think it's Maru, how you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. um, but I've only recently found it a few months ago. But it's like one of those songs where like, if you listen to it in the radio, it doesn't sound very interesting. But if you just put your headphones in, sit down, kind of close your eyes for a minute, it's just so beautiful. Mm. Um, and Don't Panic. This is a random one, but this was when I was in secondary school. I really loved Don't Panic by Coldplay. Yeah, Because yeah, I yeah, also yeah. think that's a really beautiful mm. song. But mm. yeah, they're more, yeah, they're my favourites in a sense. I just think they're really lovely songs. No. And I like songs. Songs. Okay, so what's next for you? Just want to write other. What's next for you? Um, so, I mean, in the near future, I've just finished, um, recording a song. So that will be being released in a month or so. So maybe like 
mid March to April. Mm. Um, but really, I just want to kind of now I've left uni, I kind of just want to put my everything into pursuing music and just kind of yeah, trying to find my way around it, making yeah. more TikToks, I think. Mm. But um, and yeah, because like with TikToks, I also want to. I think it'll be fun, um, in a sense that because it's only thirty seconds. You can do so many different things. So, like music wise, there's so much I could explore so many genres. Cause it's not like you have to write a whole entire song in that genre, or whatever. You just have to like, I don't know, I just think it'd be fun to like create different like songs, mm. different vibes, mm. different covers. I don't know. You get an idea, sense. just write something, you get an idea, just create a little TikTok. And exactly, it's an idea that can turn into something else, become a full Exactly. Song. Brilliant. Wait, so. well, right. Jasmine Fehall, thank you so much for this interview with us, Cast of You. Really appreciated it. Love to get to know more about you and everything else and all our people watching this and all our supporters and everyone else and your supporters. Hope you enjoy what we had to talk about today. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you. And it was really nice to speak to you. And thanks for the opportunity as well. I hope yeah. my answer is all right. <laughs> You've done fantastic well. Thank oh. you so much. You have to basically send us some of your music. I want to put some yep. of your music on this or a bit of video or footage, whatever it is. I've got some footage of you. I'll probably put a bit of that mm -hmm. on this too. So it might be oh, nice. Okay. All right, and we'll share it. But thank you so much once again, and have a wonderful Yeah, no life. worries. Yeah? You take care. Yeah. Thank you, Jasmine. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.